How's it going, guys? Copy Night Gaming here. Today, we're going to be playing some Pillars of Eternity, the White March. This is a blind playthrough. I've played through the character creator uh, just so that I know what I want because it's pretty lengthy so far. But I didn't go really any farther than that. So you're getting blind reactions, and we're, we're going to head straight into this. Um, I've been a huge fan of Dungeons & Dragons my entire life. I played a lot of the Baldur's Gate you know, games back in the day, Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2 with all the expansions. So I'm not unfamiliar with this kind of game. And I've heard that there's a lot of similarities between Pillars of Eternity and between those Baldur's Gate, you know, kind of forefather uh, isometric RPGs. So I'm super excited about this. And I'm really looking forward to see what the story holds because I've heard a lot of people, you know, really commend this game's story as well as some of the mechanics. So very, very excited to get into this one. We're going to go straight into character creation. I was warned that the character creation is incredibly long. So I was like, okay, well, before I start filming, let me go ahead and know what I want. And then and then we can step through because games like this, you know, Five anything kind of like a pen and paper RPG is is going to the be very in depth, to the right? Skies for assurance that he is on the right course. I will be reading the the dialogue but i'm not going to sit through the cutscenes uh right now so we will be a male as last time i checked i was one and then we are going to go with an elf because i kind of want to do something different i want to do like a like a ranger uh kind of build on this so i i don't typically play this kind of character but i thought it would be kind of cool uh something different and we are going to go with wounding shot for a companion we are obviously going to go with bear i mean what's more freaking manly and masculine than a bear chasing someone down fuck that antelope crap get that out of here let's go with a bear baby it's the only righteous option it's the only you know uh, option that was literally for us and of course you know we're doing a bear we got we got to do yogi the bear hey boo boo <laughs> no well, maybe that was a bad choice because yogi's too damn friendly you know He's too damn friendly. Maybe, maybe we got a weak ass bear now. God damn it. Okay, I should have gone. With, I should have gone with something way more manly than that. Okay, what do we have here? Might represents strength. Constitution is health and stamina. Dex is uh, hand-eye coordination. Perception. Highly recommended for ranger. So might. Wow, interesting choice. Game might is highly recommended for ranger, and we got 15 points to play with. So we're gonna dump. Let's go ahead and dump five into the highly recommended. One, two, one, two. And then let's even these two out as well. Looks like a pretty balanced, you know, looks like a pretty balanced ranger to me. Now, what I would say is I'm interested to see how Might plays into the ranger build. Because typically you play, you know, a ranger in any game and, and Might is the last thing you want. I mean, unless you're just using a really heavy bow or something. I don't understand that. Like... You know, I didn't, I didn't realize Rangers had to buy protein shakes, I guess is what I'm getting at. <laughs> okay, where are we from? We're going to be from the Living Lands. It seems like the most Ranger thing, you know, you got to have a nice lush forest. And the Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Perfect for a Ranger. Its weather is unpredictable and its ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. The living lands are home to an assortment of races and a variety of colonial and independent settlements. It seems like the most ranger place to me. So we're going to go ahead and pick that one. And then as a background, being a ranger, I imagine you're a hunter, of course. You live for the thrill of the chase, whether for glory or for sustenance. You have made your living taking the lives of wild creatures and soon not so wild creatures. I presume should this be an RPG of any merit. Uh, we obviously got to go with something like Earth Tone, you know, nice and green, friggin' blaze it. I want a ponytail. I don't know why, but I'm very passionate about this subject. Not quite there. Can I not get a ponytail? What is wrong with you? Okay, a mohawk may have to do then. All right, if I can't have a damn ponytail, we're going with the mohawk. Mohawk it is. All right, so we have a punk rock ranger. Yeah, baby, let's go. Uh, and he's obviously got to be, ooh, what seems rangerish? Feisty. Yeah. I like feisty. Into name. The name shall be uh, 
what's something punk rock? I, I, I mean, you, you got a mohawk, so it's got to be like, I, I don't know. It makes me think of like Bad Religion and like, you know, Rancid, Misfits. Uh, I think we'll go with Robbie Rotten and draw a parallel to Robin Hood. How about that? Rock and roll. Robbie Rotten, the level one ranger from hell. Done. I just realized I didn't have any sound this entire time. Let's put the cans on. And it, it just works. <laughs> All right, and we're into the game. The caravan master finishes addressing the group. His bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. I know a couple of those rocks. living in the south, let me tell you. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Oh, God. Because you don't drink water, of course, which case you'll be dead in a day. Oh, God. Okay. I know you want to hunt. Oh, no, I skipped the box. <laughs> but see about the refilling our ruined. water first. Got Shit. a sick one here. Okay, Odama looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparfell, who carries an old sun-bleached bow. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. Sparfell nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Okay, what do we have here? Our first choice. The choice. <laughs> we are diverging the timeline already. Okay, I like this. Uh, where would I find those berries? What are those ruins? Is it dangerous? out here what are these huge rocks coming up out of the ground that they don't got Audra where you come from question well it just grows up out of the ground like this goes deep like tree roots some of it all the way to the heart of the world you believe the stories okay wow yeah, I think I saw that movie you know with it's uh, more like a shell than a guy from the mummy easier to work if you're a mason got all kinds of strange properties seems to have some kind of life of its own dies if it gets dug up loses its luster folks think it probably grew at one point or another but not these days so that makes me think that these rocks are going to have a massive impact on the story the soul butchers in defiance bay use it for different things soul butchers. i've heard tell it can hold a man's soul but i don't care to see it got enough to worry about without seeing something like that Okay, I'm st I'm st I'm a I'm starting a metal band and I'm fucking naming the thing Soul Butchers. That is the coolest term I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, do you listen to metal? Yeah, I just got Soul Butchers' first album. <gasps> you know, like that's fucking sick. All right, where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Okay, cool. Uh, what are those Nothing ruins? you won't see on half Final the hills question. of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. I do they mind. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead. I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. Okay. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armored-clad woman who has spent the journey's nights sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. The woman Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. <laughs> Thanks, Kalisha. What kind of guide says something like that? The kind of guy that gets fired. <laughs> kind you can afford. Okay, a cheap guide. <laughs> Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Aiden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Okay. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. 
If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. Beowick. That sounds intense. That makes me think there's the gonna man. be a Beowick. Let's get going before you keel over. Welcome to Pillars of Eternity. If this is your first visit, you may want to watch these windows. Okay. Hmm? Onward and upward. Off we go Anyone to the realm supplies? of adventure. I've got sundries for sale. Let's see what sundries this strange man has. You there, strange man. You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Uh, let's see what you got. Uh, do I have gold? I have a hundred gold. Uh, what do I have right now? Uh, some random things? Cloak of the Obsidian Order. Okay, hey, there's some uh, tiny obsidian worm. Okay, there's some lore here. Uh, Gownum's Pledge. Right-click for details. What is this thing? Why do I have something that's worth 410 freaking uh, copper? Sidem grants the ability to shield the wearer from the myriad perils that plague the world of Aeora, an aspect of the god Aeothus. Gown res represents the harvest of an old age, symbolized here by the many interlocking sickles that form the ring. As Gown helps protect the def dignity of old age, so too do his followers pledge to prevent young lives from being harvested before their time. Intriguing. And then I have a giant miniature space piglet. This tiny titanic pig has an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at odds with its endearing behavior. It follows you dutifully and requires nothing in return save companionship. Well, that's excellent. We have a space pig. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Okay. Uh, do we need anything? I'm going to go with no. Like, I'm sure we already have a bow. Yeah, we already have a bow. Okay. Come on, forward, Robbie. Well, I should get eh? the party. Exploration is key. Let's see what's along this wall. It's a deer. Oh, it got away. <gasps> Bodies. The corpse is cold to the touch, and a ripe smell wafts from its putrid... Waves. A dark, crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple linen clothing. Okay, we got some leather armor. Hey, we got a lockpick. Certainly take that. Uh, is that leather armor better than what I had? Okay, I'm wearing heavy armor. Interesting, a, a ranger wearing heavy armor. This game has an intriguing take on, uh, on what it means to be a ranger. Heavy armor and stuff. Well, I was expecting some heathenry when I found the bodies, but it appears not to be so. No heathens here. Beer, very nice. An excellent find, if I do have to say so myself. The footprints around the campfire are indistinct and may have been here for days or longer. Okay. To the ruins we go. Where are the hut Let's dwellers? Let's check by those outcroppings. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, everyone, attack the wolf! We've found combat! Everyone! Let's go! Get him! Blast him! Let's zoom in on the combat! He has died. Most excellent. Um, wolf hide. Okay. Oh, the berries! This We've found it. them! Perfect. I hear you're a pretty good hunter. Don't tell Sparfell or he'll run his mouth to Gilded Bale. Try to convince you how much better he is. That's true. I have spent a lot of uh, time living on my own in the wilderness. I used to hunt monsters. I was responsible for hunting and gathering. I used to hunt monsters for a living. Is that even a question? Do you know who I am? How is it you happened to come here? I risked my life and kept a lot of people safe in their beds. Hazard of the lifestyle, I suppose. You have to expect it was a possibility no matter how much you didn't want it to be that way. Fair enough. Kalisha breathes in her surroundings. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Redrick's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of the lot? 
I would say no. I am just passing through. I am, an, uh, I am a vagabond going wherever the next punk show is. That's usually the case with the big city, just a little way further up the same road. Where are you headed? Uh, where is the next Bad Religion concert? Or Flogging Molly. That will also work. Uh, nowhere special. I'm going to continue to the city. Probably wander. Yeah, I'll probably wander for a while. Follow the next band. I couldn't judge you for that. Been half my life. Just watch yourself. You get too far off the beaten path. These lands are wild in more ways than one. Okay. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odamel, give me an earful. Let's be on our way. All right. Uh, we can learn about her later. Uh, you know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfell's getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Slap him around a little. Stream's just down that way. Come on. Let's get the water. Okay. To the stream we go. Oh, I bet this is the bodies, right? I bet this is the bodies. I but we already found them. What is the in what you know, that kind of ruins the surprise, I guess. I, I bet money this is Sparville. Or maybe not. No, I'm just stupid. <laughs> what a surprise. Powerful oh. went hunting. At least he left. At least he left the water skins. Okay. You crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kaliska waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. You've gained an item. Water skin. Okay. Oh, this is dope. I've never seen this. This is cool. Out of the trees emerges Sparfell, one of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, and there is a strangeness to his gait. His stride wobbly as he moves towards you, to as he moves towards you with labored breath. Sparfell, are you all right? Sparfell's toe catches on a rock, and he collapses forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Okay. Prepare for battle. Ambush. <gasps> Just in time. Oh, I thought you were an ally. Never mind. Uh, you, attack the close one. Kill him. Uh, you, I don't think my mm. arrows are working against him. Ah, yeah. Got him! Hmm? Yep. Ah. Let's go this way. Arrow battle. Oh, I'm good. I have plenty of health. They're doing no damage. Sweet. Come on, we have to get back to camp. Okay, back to camp we go. Um, except that we obviously have to loot this man. Eh? Everybody on the road again. Off we go. <gasps> I hear the sounds of battle. Oh yes, they've they've begun What's their attack need? again. Bear, attack. Hmm? Yogi. I will attack the hunters. <laughs> Stay strong, men. <laughs> Get up, Kalisha. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, she attacks with her torch. That's kind of wild. Bear, attack. Everyone, attack. Oh, there we go. Okay. Loot. Hmm? Hmm. Uh, ooh, okay, we got some axes, bows, all got kinds it. of junk. Take everything eh? until you can't hold it. <gasps> no! What? They killed everybody! What? All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. 
Kalisha, Kalisha puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away some poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognize as Hayden, the last of your caravan left standing. <gasps> Not the merchant. Is that him? The one who was dressed well? Lay down your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. Lore requirement not met. Okay, uh, why have you done this? Uh, murderers, you will pay for your life. Death, willed by the god, is not murder, but righteousness. You have trespassed in places of which no mortal man is worthy. The debt is not ours to pay, but yours. So I say again, lay down your arms. I refuse. Wow, I can't do anything. I can't say anything. Oh, actually, okay, I can say a couple things. Don't trust them. They mean to kill us all. Only a fool attacks a weak enemy while a stronger one yet lives. Yeah, your courage is a mask. None of you has yet slain a true warrior. I kind of like that. Put down your weapons. Let him go. Stay armed. If I put my w down my weapons, we're all dead. Your courage is a mask. The man's brow creases, questioning. We have killed many trespassers like you. Your kills are sloppy. The wounds on these people are inefficient and off-target. This is the work of an untested men accustomed to carelessness. <gasps> the man bares his teeth. He looks at Hayden, helpless, his eyes shut tightly for the killing blow. The man spits. We'll see whose courage is a mask. He shoves Hayden towards you. As he does so, the man rakes his blade against Hayden's torso. No! Hayden screams and stumbles forward, a wide gash in his clothing beginning to bloom crimson. The man sets his feet to engage you, his axe raised high. <gasps> Don't hurt him, you bastards. Uh, okay, there's a hunter over there, so I'm gonna eh? put him on the hunter. Bear, attack the big man. Lady, hmm? attack the big man. Begin. Okay, I like this. It looks like Hayden's like a rogue. He's about to win that fight. There we go, Hayden, attack the leader. Oh, he exploded. Oh, my God. Killed him, yes. The day is saved. Your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companions now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. Oh no, it's what the caravan guy was talking about. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good, good, the gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to slip beneath, seep beneath your skin, and where it pierces you, it feels as though it is rending you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bowel, Odema's body stirs, and with great effort he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely open. He looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! Go, go, go! What's happening? Is that the Badiwala or whatever it was? I, the Batwaka? The Batwaka. Oh. What is it? Straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With a last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. Hayden trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the rock, the face of the rocks, one of the fallen attackers who had been feigning death lunges for him and he topples onto the rocky ground. No! Restrained, Hayden lashes out against his fatigued assailant but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you. From your position, you would have a good chance at hitting your mark. Uh, 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 fire at the attacker, easy. Your aim is true, and the hit jars Hayden loose. Excellent. 
Okay, lurching to his feet, Hayden clambers up the base of the rocks. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. No, Hayden, no! But diving out onto the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Securing his other hands, you pull with waning strength, and it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold just long enough for Hayden to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. Yes, okay, sweet. <sighs> There is a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. <gasps> Yo. <laughs> Chapter one is a ripper. I gotta tell you that. <laughs> Dude, th 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 this, I'm already enthralled with the story. This is pretty dope. Was that? A Buick. Had to be. Then we're lucky to be alive. What is that? And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. What is a Buick? We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Can you walk? His jaw tightens and he nods. Okay. Well, yeah. that happened. Uh, let's see what we can do here. This looks like the muddy pile from Valheim. I wonder if there's iron in there. That should be far enough. <sighs> we oh, look for another way now? out. Oops. Storm has to die sometime. What happened out there? Galicia shakes her head. Windstorm, of a kind they only get in the air Glanfath. Not many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. Then Glenfathen, were, the Glenfathen word is Beowek. To them it's the God's way of reaping the souls of the land that couldn't find their own way out. But they'll take a living soul as soon as a, de as soon as a dead one. But they'll take a living soul as soon as a dead one. I think that may be in proper grammar, but that's fine. Still got yours? Yeah, yeah. You don't seem very upset about this. Kalisha looks you in the eye, a volatile current running beneath her voice. Maybe you just don't know me enough to know what upset looks like. And maybe I've seen worse too, seen worse and kept on walking, because there's nothing else to be done, and because there's other people you care about who still need you. I sense a backstory. This is intense. Who attacked us? Glen Fothens, those would be the hut dwellers Odama warned you about, look to be fangs of Galloway, uh, who are the twitchiest of the lot. They go ruin to ruin looking for fights with colonists. Poor Odama, I think he half expected this once we lost the main road. So it's his fault. <laughs> Hayden takes a step forward and his knee buckles, and before anyone can catch him, he stumbles to the ground, his cheek striking the time-worn cobbles. No, Hayden! On unsteady legs, he claws his way up to the wall and back to his feet, but his stance is shaky like a sailor walking on land after a could, time at sea. Could we maybe stay here and rest a few hours? I've lost some blood. Well, there's camping supplies, it so you have to... quiet off to the left. There might be a place to rest there. Yes. So there's camping supplies, kind of like in uh, Dungeons & Dragons, it seems. Uh, you have please, to do a rest. I just need to lie down for a while. Then we can move as fast as you want. Onward. Maybe you didn't hear me. We are gonna die in here if we don't get moving and get this place figured out before the looters come back. We've either gotta find the exit or a damn good place to hide. Gosh, I think we gotta take the rest. I mean, if he's that hurt, like we gotta take this the rest. We're not gonna be anywhere. Us. No offense, but there's people out there I'd much rather die for. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's friggin' do it, I guess. Let's let's head back over here. What you need? Wait, what is this? A lower level of the ruin has been blocked off by fallen rubble. Okay. Well, let's camp. Choose a camping bonus. Uh, I think damage mold, damage reduction. You can't go wrong with damage reduction. Let's let's just do that. Ooh, pretty campfire. Very relaxing. No. Kalisha! 
Hayden stretches as he wakes, gingerly probing the gash from his across his stomach. The flesh begins uh, to knit together. Gods, that's better. I think I'm ready to find a way out. He sits up quickly and looks around the chamber. She really did leave us. She won't get far unless he crawls to his knees and begins rummaging through the equipment with mounting desperation. You have lost an item Damn of the water skin. She took all our water. Kalisha! <laughs> Why? <laughs> if we hurry, maybe we can catch her. Let's go. Yeah? You have to stick together. Have you ever watched Scooby-Doo? Wonder who was here. See if they left anything useful behind. All right, search the boxes. Looks like we got uh, uh, more camping supplies. Okay, torch, good. Small shield, good. Put the torch on his side. At least give us a little, uh, little vision in the darkness. Oh. Look at the tiles. What are those symbols? Enable scouting mode to move stealthily and search for hidden objects like traps and secret doors. How do I do that? Scouting. Quickly and quietly. Oh, <gasps> okay. Well. Sure. Uh, this is a one-person mission. Huh? Poor Kalisha. Oh, she, that's her? <gasps> no! Kalisha! No. I knew you for so short a time, but I felt such an ethereal connection. <laughs> Kalisha! Oh, beautiful, bountiful Kalisha with your blonde hair and, and, and temperamental attitude. The way you abandoned me, it, it, it was so attractive. Yeah? Are these traps? Well, of course it's a trap. I was literally looking at the dead person and I thought I could get on the pillar. <laughs> Why am I so dumb? Oh my God. In my defense, those other traps did not light up. But I don't think, I, I also think it may have taken me out of a, I think it also may have taken me out of sure, scouting mode. I'll be awake. Well, I'll Had be back be. in a second. One hour later. I will I will make a note of this. Yeah. So apparently it, things look? things can change based on the uh I guess based on the, the whatever seed it is. I guess some of this is randomly generated. Hey, we got a full water skin from that body. A trembling, sickly figure emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Knobby elbows and thin ribs show through its scaly flesh, but you recognize it as a Zarip. It watches you con cautiously, breathing in ragged sighs. Uh, I'll tear you to pieces, lizard! The Zarip's eyes narrow and it hisses. It lunges, raising the spear. Okay. Ah, it's tiny. How, how rough can this be? Uh, get him! Oh, he's doing, he's doing some damage to our boy. Okay. All right. Well, good to know. Zara packs a, packs a little punch. Ooh, another enemy. Well, bear first. Hmm? Attack from distance. How can you I go help? around the back. I mean, that's fine too. Don't go around the back. It's okay. He, hmm? he, he exploded. All right. Oh, let's just uh, hold on. We gotta loot everything. That's just another axe, I guess. A crack runs along this wall from floor to ceiling. A light gust of air passes through it. Um. Use the hammer and chisel. You set to work. The cracks lengthen and widen with your efforts, but the process is more taxing than you'd expect. Sweat beads your foreheads, and your muscle begins to ache. Continue. After long moments, you begin to see light on the other side. With one final tap, several blocks of stone shift, then tumble loose, clearing a gap just wide enough to pass through. Excellent. Well, goodbye, hammer and chisel. You serve ahead. your purpose. See what's around the corner. <laughs> and then battle. 
Get them men. Excellent work. Hmm? Well, let's not make the same mistake we did last time. New save. The boys. Save. This sounds a lot like music from, like, Skyrim. Dun, dun. You know that? It sounds a lot like Skyrim music. Intriguing. Don't hear any sign of that storm either. Die, spider! Spear, spiderling, easy. Let's go! Let's. Onward. Uh, let's try north. Let's head this way. Let's check out this room. Let's. Oh, get the big one. Get the big one. I need to not disengage. I know that probably gets them like an opportunity attack or something. <gasps> Did my bear die? Let's oh no, I think he got knocked out. That's what I think happened. Yeah, it's at zero endurance. Okay. Uh, woo, what do we do? Oh, okay. They recover after a fight really quick. Hmm? That's good to know. Very good to know. Bats as large as chickens are stuck on there. Okay. Let's see what this body has. A helmet. Uh, we will take the helmet and I will equip it to Robbie Rotten over here. There we go. You know what? I'll give it to... Actually, I'll give it to... Uh, what's his face? Because he's going to be a lot more up close and personal than I will be. Well, let's see what this is. A rapier. Bloodstone. Okay. Uh, I feel like he could probably use a rapier, right? One hand, speed very fast. DPS 10 to 14. Dagger is also 10 to 14. You know what? Let's uh, give him a rapier and a dagger so we get two different kinds of damage that we can bet on at least. Instead of just one. Huh? Now we can have piercing and slashing damage. I think that's a pretty good approach. I think that'll be okay. I love these glowing crystals. They're very beautiful. Oh, let's... Nope, 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 nope. Not again. Said through. Whew. Okay, did we make it out? We did. Oh, what's that person over there? What the heck? What? Is it like druids? Older robed man. Four figures stand before an otherworldly apparatus. An ancient structure of chiseled adra and metallic veins, ominous and looming like a silent observer, standing motionless in their mists, is what appears to be a human body, colorless as stone or ash. The other figures gaze upon it in what might be contemplation. From your vantage point, you are well obscured from their view. Okay. Figure closest to the machine stands out amongst them. A thick gray beard frames a face otherwise hidden beneath a metallic mask. His faded robes are embroidered with a runic language unlike anything you have ever seen, and he wears a strange black headdress with two protrusions that jut out like the wings of a malevolent creature. Both binder bear witness, and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, Queen that was, and regard it among your favored. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. The book. I wonder what the book is. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother? In the endless esteem of her memory that is without flaw, step forth and be assured of the great worth is of Is he going to sacrifice force. them? Are they all going to be sacrificed? What's happening? Whoa! 
a very energetic pineapple. For an instant, the apparatus grows quiet and the air is still. Then all at once it erupts with a concussive surge. Light floods your vision and you are knocked to the ground. Your head snaps back as you land and pain wells into the back of your skull, washing your last thoughts away into black, unconscious void. You open your eyes to a different place, another time. You stand in a circular room, grand and domed, its walls lined with adra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chain is, chamber is unweathered. At the far end, a great pillar of Adra pieces the floor from below, pierces the floor from below, its shimmering texture giving the illusion of boundless depth. Encircling the pillar is an apparatus much like the one you have just seen, but immense and multifaceted and intertwined. Your thoughts are yours and not yours, and they seem to exist before you think them, and they are all questions, pressing questions, troubling questions, questions that must be answered or... At the base of the pillar now, you see a man with a thick gray beard and a ceremonial robe crowned with a strange ornamental headdress. You know this man. You are walking towards him now at a pace that is hurried while trying not to appear so. You have something you want to ask him, one question above all, and the question spins madly in your mind. Is that dick big though? I have no clue. I have no clue. <laughs> you awaken to find your to find your malaise has broken, only to be replaced with something far more concerning. Faint whispers are audible at the edge of your hearing, like a ringing in your ears that does not subside. Movement flits through your periphery, but when you turn to look, you can see no sign of whatever it was. You find your gaze regularly darting this way and that, an involuntary paranoid tick. If this is a sickness, it may be dangerous to go without treatment for long. Figures at the machine stand frozen in place, flesh and blood replaced by cinders and ash. The man who led them is nowhere to be seen. You find Hade in a short distance away, in a shallow lake, shallow lake of his own blood. His body does not stir. You, uh, he died? No! You are alone and far from help. Gilded Veil may be your best hope of receiving treatment before things get worse. No! Why did George R. R. Martin write this shit? Why is everybody dying? This is bull. First the treasonous Galicia, and now we lose Hayden, the, you know, freaking hunky rogue. Come on, man. Whoa, whoa. Uh, that was a man being tortured. I don't know what they put in that water skin, but... I don't think it was just water. That is a person getting crucified. Very nice. The massive structure is formed of stone, adra, and copper. And covered in strange glyphs, the air around it vibrates with an unusual energy. Okay. Can I interact with stuff here? Oh, I can interact with the people. Mm -hmm. I should probably do that. Yeah, let's see what happens when I grab them. Vessel flesh. Oh. Ugh. That's kind of grody. Just, yeah. just grabbing a handful. Fucking vessel flesh. I mean, you know how it is. You gotta, you gotta get some of that vessel flesh. It's a delicacy in some cultures. All right, to the road south, I guess. Uh, Valewood, we go. It will take you six hours to complete your journey from Celant Lis to Valewood. Except, goodbye, Hayden. You will be remembered fondly. I'm just gathering everything. Another corpse. <coughs> Why are there so many corpses? Why's everybody got to die in this game? And now we're seeing ghosts. Oh, God. Blood moss. Am I seeing ghosts because I have this, like, disease? Or are we seeing ghosts because ghosts exist in this game? I don't know. This is the question. Well, that's probably a good place to end it for number one. Thank you so much for stopping by. 
I have been the Coffee Nut. You have been yourself. And I'll catch you when we continue our Pillars of Eternity playthrough on the next video. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like my content. And I will see you later, everybody. Have a good one.